Wow, here we are. This is Thunder Pop Extra. It is also the start of our season six. So this coming up on Thunder Pop. Coming up on Thunder Pop. There. Coming up on Thunder Pop. I'm really excited. We have a special guest tonight. The one and only Jody K. Still getting used to looking at the camera. <laughs> Not looking at the screen. I want I'm so vain. I always want to just look at look at myself on the screen instead of look at the camera. Okay. But anyway, yeah. Uh Jody K tonight. Jody K is a national radio personality. She is an actress. She is now a rap artist. And she's uh, going to be a great, fun guest tonight. I'm really excited. We're going to talk about The Social Dilemma on Netflix, the documentary that's making a lot of waves during the pandemic. A lot of people are talking about that documentary lately. We're going to talk about her appearance on The Steve Harvey Show. Uh, there's some interesting, she's got some interesting takes on that, I think. I'm looking forward to talking to her about her appearance on on his old TV show. And then, you know, just some other stuff. Lakers just, she's from, L she lives in L.A., the Lakers just won the bubble championship. So we're going to probably talk about that as well. And we have a thunder take to open the show like we usually do. And we have our intro, which I'm going to roll out right now. And it's so weird looking at a camera rather than looking at the screen. I don't like that. Okay, I lied. And there, still getting used to this damn thing. Okay, there we are. That was a fun intro. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, we. We had fun putting that together. I enjoyed it. But thank you. If coming from you, a professional <laughs> in the industry, that means a lot to me. I, I, I really oh, appreciate it. Thank that. you. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, here we go. Jody Kay uh, from, coming to us from L.A., uh, the city of the, I think, 17-time NBA champion L.A. Lakers, if I'm, not, if I'm not mistaken. I may be getting that number wrong, but I'll L.A. Lakers. <laughs> I'd be lying if I told you I knew. <laughs> yeah, just, we'll just go with it. We'll just go yeah. with it. They act like it's right. That's what you do when you're not sure. But anyway, yes, Jody Kay coming to us from L.A. The Lakers just winning the NBA championship, by the way. So congratulations to you and your city. Thank you. Thank you. I, thank you. Which I lived in for, for a while and I still got some good friends in L.A. Uh, my friend Billy, I know out there, is really excited about the Lakers winning the championship and um, now hoping maybe the Dodgers advance to the World Series. I think they're still in it. In they baseball, are. yeah, so cool. It could be uh, two for two this year uh, in sports. So, coming to us in the Thunderpop Dome, Jody K. Jody K. Of course, like I said, the intro and uh, a, a master of many traits: uh, actress, radio host, rap artist. Now, uh, did I miss anything? Oh, um, I think you're good. You know, just please don't call me an influencer and we'll find. <laughs> I did leave out. Uh, yeah, I did leave that out. And I thought I might have even seen uh, that in some copy somewhere. But is that is a social influencer? Is that a dirty word now? Is that something that people want to avoid being labeled a social influencer? I I don't think it's a dirty word. I mean, people are making a lot of money off of it. It's just like I feel I was just going to sound really mean, but I feel like. And we worked for that, you know? <laughs> Can you hear me? Yeah, there was a little bit of a lag okay. there, but um, we added some, we did this last week. We didn't have the lags like that, but you're coming from LA. And also we added in uh, a couple of other places we're, we're streaming to tonight. So uh, we'll okay. see. We'll see what we're doing. We can always switch to Wi-Fi. We're on a, kind of an Ethernet setup right now. But if we... We're not getting everything we need to get. I can, I can make a switch and we can put a, a picture up for a few seconds and then come back. 
uh, do a little intermission. We might even be able to have time to run and get something out we of the We can do all the backup plans. That's great. <laughs> we try to. We try to. Um, you do live as well. We were talking about that before we went on. Uh, you're over at Dash Radio, and I know you do a couple of different shows. You have your own podcast. Mm -hmm. uh, tell us about the podcast that you do, and then you also have a – I know you do a weekly show over at Dash Radio, a music video show, new music video show on Thursdays. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, I started off with only having my own podcast before, you know, like, I guess it's the thing to do now. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, but you've been on for yeah, I, yeah I, you can't even find a microphone anymore. I, I remember I broke my microphone and I went to Best Buy across the street. They were gone. I'm like, what the yeah. hell? Where are the microphones at? But <laughs> anyway, so yeah, so I, uh, my podcast is Jody Can Cut. A lot of people think it sounds like a porno. It's not. It just means it's my uncut opinion. And it's about, um, you know, being living in America and being, you know, the first generation Indian born. So I try to talk about a lot of things that are outside the norm. Well, for us, it would be normal. But for, you know, people that are still living in that, like, you know, Indian society bubble, like sex gay marriage or this and that or you know things like that so i started off talking about you know uh things outside the norm and then i got picked up by uh ruckus avenue radio which is on dash and i have a weekly show with them now every thursday 10 a.m and 10 p.m pacific time and then um during this pandemic i um they kind of like liked my show and it was doing well and then they started having me do instagram lives with artists and from there they liked my personality so they wanted me to do new music friday um on twitch i had no idea what the hell twitch was there's so many <laughs> different you know things that i'm like i thought twitch was for video games and um so now we're trying to do a trl style thing where we play oh, um nice. mu music videos because i feel like back in the day when i would come home i would love watching music videos and i feel like nowadays people are kind of losing that interest into music videos and we're kind of trying to bring it back so, uh, and we're trying to bring artists and highlight them. So that's a really fun show that we do for two hours on Twitch on Fridays. And it's from four to, hold on, four, five, six, four to six <laughs> Pacific time on a, a Dash Radio Switch. I saw a video somewhere where someone was saying that they work in production. The person that makes these videos on TikTok, they work in production in your backyard. And they said that they see, they've seen during the pandemic, uh, and I know I was like you, I was really sad about seeing that kind of music videos and kind of go, mm -hmm. kind of go away a little bit, like in terms of people prioritizing that as something that they were excited about. But, uh, this, um, one lady does a blog and uh, she's a, does production out of LA and she said she could see videos maybe coming back as a result of the pandemic because music videos is, is content that can be easily produced with small crews, with social distancing, uh, opposed mm -hmm. to big budget production movie that has got to be a headache for big budget production movie crews to be able to pull off these, these movies mm -hmm. during, during a pandemic. Um, and it costs a lot of money, but a little small music video shoot is starting to become really appealing again is what she was saying. And there had been, there's been a demand for it. So maybe, maybe, you know, yeah, you, you would always take no pandemic over pandemic. Yeah, if you had a cool. <laughs> but if you've got one, then you got to say, well, what, positives could come out of this and maybe that might be one of the positives is maybe music videos might make a comeback that would be really cool i, I think so i think so because there's a lot of, i'm not saying a lot of people are more home and have want to see more entertainment and are more curious and like you said um you know if, if, if you can get by with a music video of just me and you know somewhere or a storyline and also for the pandemic you know um it kind of gave me an opportunity to show my interview skills on live on dash because if i didn't if this pandemic didn't happen i don't know if they would have gave me a chance to do that so i guess you know there's some some positive there who knew if new music friday would even have happened <laughs> so, yeah you know that's yeah. that's a good point uh, with you know doors that close because obviously and i'm gonna ask you later about kind of something mm -hmm. related to that about what the pandemic might what the 2020 might have looked like for you had there not been a pandemic, did you have plans? I want to talk to you about that later, but yeah, it's, uh, it's amazing. like I've wanted to do a live to put, turn the podcast into a live stream for a long time. But if it had not been for me stuck at home for several months, mm -hmm. I might not have taken the, got it, gotten it done so quickly. So same thing here on that. Um, and getting, you know, the right. studio set up for it for visual. Cause it was not, 
it was not camera friendly in here before we yeah. started making it camera friendly. And actually the area that you can't see that's on the other side is probably a little messy right now because I've been, I'm used to having people in here and because we've been uh, social distancing and not having people over um, it's been just me. So I, I can afford yeah. to let it get a little messy. So yeah, on the, no side of the camera right now, it's colossal mess. Um, oh, well, well so your we, angle right now is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's like, I wear these cause I, you know, I have a three-year-old son, so I get exhausted. Um, so I oh. wear B12 patches. Oh, <laughs> you know, energy. One. And so those are like, I take those off and I have them. They're stuck all over the other side of the, well, other the side kid, of they say it'll be fun. They say, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, he's That's he's awesome. a lot of fun. He's he's uh he's actually been on TV with me before. Uh, my oh, son nice. made his national TV debut when he was less than six months old with me on TMZ Live. Oh wow, he's already a little star. And he was red. He was he was sick. So I had him in my lap and I was bouncing him on my on my knee. And he, but he was super like red and pink in the face because he had a fever. And I was uh -huh. just trying to soothe them and keep them comfortable. And I was talking to um, uh, the guys from TMZ and mm -hmm. about whatever topic we were talking about. And uh, they didn't even, they were like so focused, lightning focused on the topic, whatever it was we were talking about, yeah. my virus or whatever it was, that they didn't even notice that I had a, a little baby on my knee. <laughs> down. So anyway, they were lightning focused over there. Yeah. Uh, coming from LA. Or you, you're actually you're actually from the East Coast, but you ended up in L.A., correct? Correct. Yeah. Originally, originally from the Brooklyn area. So how does a Brooklyn end up Queens. in L.A.? Uh, Queens, uh, but I would oh, call Queens. it okay, Queens. Queens. Okay. Yep, yep, Jamaica, okay. Queens. But um, my parents actually they, um, you know, New York was a little expensive, so we decided to move to first. It was Northern California in the Bay Area. So that's where I originally lived and I was pretty much raised there. And my, I had a semester off from school. I have a degree in um, business administration, but uh, I had a semester off from school and Vine was very popular back then. Mm -hmm. And I was told that I was funny. And like, I think the move, it was like what, six seconds long for videos, the six very seconds. Short. Yeah. Yeah. Like literally really quick. So I, you know, you'd have to be really, really like you know creative to make it that you know but then the six seconds to make it make sense so mm -hmm. i i would just start making like little funny videos in here and there and i didn't really realize the power of social media back then but i had like a hundred i think I had a million or a hundred thousand i don't know i had a lot of i had a lot of i went i had a video that went viral and i didn't even know what the hell viral was and it was crazy i didn't know what to do i was like oh my god all these people know like who i am and then you start getting like the hate comments and that's where you know, the, the hater, you learn what hater comments are and, you know, all this kind of stuff. And anyways, and then um, I was just like, you know, I, I kind of wanted to move to LA and, you know, give it a shot kind of thing. You know, I kind of wanted to see what I can do out here. And I feel like radio and all that just kind of fell in my lap, I want to say. And then I realized that this is what, you know, I'm made for. You were in the New York market, which I know is very big, like LA. It's a very big medium market. Was there ever a, a consideration of s trying it out in New York, staying in New York and seeing what you could do there? Because there's a lot of media there. Or was there just more on camera stuff in LA? So, yeah, I feel like in LA, it's more, I feel like it's not as spread out as New York is. You know what I mean? I feel like there's a lot more opportunity. Everything's very close knit. It's kind of like, once you get into this loophole, you'll get in there. And I feel like New York is a little more tough in that sense. Okay. I do love New York. So I just actually recently came back from New York mm -hmm. and I, I didn't want to come back. <laughs> I loved it there. New York has a way of just, it's very charming um, mm, in, yeah. its own way, in its own way. Now I know that sounds weird for some people because it's got a reputation for being, um, you know, people being tough and kind of push yeah. you and, uh, but it's got a charm, a certain, you, know, you go to Central Park, right in mm. the subway. Um, obviously, it's, New York's had a rough year, uh, but so has yeah. a, lot of places, a, lot of, a lot of places. A lot of places. I've had a rough I, year, but uh, I, I really like New York as well. Um, but you ended up in L.A. Mm -hmm. Did you become a Lakers fan? Were you excited about the NBA championship or was it uh, were you just sort of happy because you were there? 
Um, so for the championship, I'm actually, like I told you, I moved to the Bay Area. So that's where all my teams are 49ers, Warriors, mm-hmm. uh, and the San Francisco Giants. Mm-hmm. But as I moved here, I realized the diehard Lakerness, and I, and I haven't converted at all. Mm-hmm. But this year, I feel like because of Kobe, rest in peace, I feel like it was well deserved and it needed to happen. So I kind of feel like, um, I feel like the whole city, whether, even not even the city, everybody in California, whether you are a Laker fan or not, you know, you kind of feel like it was for Kobe and it was, it was very nice. It was magical. It was good. It was so much fun. People were crying. People got arrested. Yeah. You know, there's always the bad apples. Like there's people that were looting, which is so stupid, but um, it was, I love everybody was really happy. I was very happy for LA. Was it social distance looting? No, there was no social distancing at all in downtown LA. <laughs> yeah, that that goes out, that kind of goes out the door. The Lakers just yeah, to and that all went out the door. Um, I just feel, I mean, that's why LA is still basically not back to normal, and New York is. New York finally has indoor dining. We're still not because we don't really listen. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you know, it's California. People are free spirits. Uh, they're yeah. used to going, you know, they go to the beach, go to Venice Beach, and you can see all the people. Do this, do that. Mm-hmm. You know, the attitude where New York's a little more disciplined, I think. They've always had a reputation for being a little more disciplined. Um, yeah. So you end up in LA. You, you, you go first to the Bay Area, you dip LA. More of a Warriors fan, but still excited about the Lakers. Mm-hmm. Um, is there. Uh, is there a favorite of yours, like far as Lakers? Is it is it Kobe? Is it LeBron, or somebody else? Oh, I love. Um, of course, everyone loves Kobe. Um, Kobe was always my favorite. I loved seeing him play. I know there's a lot of LeBron haters out there, but I really like LeBron James. Honestly, I I'm kind of glad he won this because you know he shut the haters up, and I don't I don't understand why everyone always compares him to MJ and all that kind of stuff. Like LeBron is LeBron, LeBron at the end of the day. Like he's won a championship and how many different jerseys, and he's the man. You know what I mean? He can only do so much. He needed to he needed the team support to win, but he did most of it. I'll, I'll be honest. <laughs> him and AD. Yeah, yeah. yeah. AD, AD is really uh, amazing too. So I like AD as well. Yeah, it was kind of the missing piece. I mean, they would have would have been easier if they had had a third star on the team, but they did. Oh God, what's they, the what's his name ruined the game? Like, they would have won if uh, Green was his name. Green, if he mm-hmm. he was wide open, I was like, I would have made that shot. <laughs> yeah, sure I would have made that shot. Like you had so much time. What was your problem? <laughs> yeah, that was that was uh, that was frustrating for Lakers fans. I'm sure, absolutely. Um, I want to ask you. We got a Thunder take. Mm-hmm. We have a thunder take and I'm going to switch something here. It's just getting used to everything. Okay. Here we are. I don't have a sound effect for the thunder take on the soundboard. So I don't know we'll what make, I'm we'll, make, we'll make one. <laughs> Halloween. We might just do this. We could do that as well. <laughs> Halloween's coming up. Okay. By the way, what's Halloween going to look like this year? Have people decided what what the trick or treating situation is going to be? Uh, no, I was wondering the same thing. I, it's crazy because Halloween is one of my favorite holidays, and it doesn't really one. It's a hundred degrees over here; it does not feel like fall at all. Mm-hmm. Uh, wow, it's hundred there right now. hundred right now. It's like eighty degrees right now at nighttime. It's it's ridiculous. It does not feel like fall, and then it's just such a weird time. And it's you know, I, I usually buy decorations. I bought like a skull or something it's, it's weird i don't know how they're gonna do it i really hope the kids get they, oh, the kids this year are really getting the shitty end of the stick the people that are born in this generation i feel really bad for them Let me so. tell you, not to not to play like the sympathy sound effect here but my son's three the first year halloween it, it there's a thunderstorm it rains we were able to go to three houses last year Aww. the poor kid broke his leg so he, he did dress up we rolled him around in a wagon for tr- and then now this year, a, a, a pandemic, a damn pandemic. So, oh I, man, I call, it, I call it the damn demic. Um, the damn demic. That's exactly what it is. <laughs> it, yeah, it gets it gets cursed at. Okay, we have a thunder take. The social dilemma. Getting a lot of uh, ta- buzz about this documentary. It's been out a little while on Netflix. You saw the documentary. I personally have been staying away from it. I'm a little scared. <laughs> And I'll tell you it why. You out. <laughs> What's that? 
it freaks you out. Yeah. And you being a person that's in media and you spend a lot of your time, you have to spend a lot of your time on Instagram. And you, I mean, you, you started your career on Vine um, in New York. And so you spend a lot of time on the Instagram, the Facebook, where, you know, the social media is a big part of your job. And I spend a lot of time on social media. So for me, I'm really scared. I'm afraid I go and watch this documentary. It's going to make me want to rethink everything I'm doing and everything that I'm I'm doing in my life. My path may, it may have me want to change everything. <laughs> um, I'm not going to lie to you. I've turned off my notifications, not because of like anything I'm scared of, but I realize how consumed, you know, we've become, you know, with social media and watching that documentary really like it did freak me out. I'm not going to lie. But again, this is our career. So, you know, you just you it, it's crazy how it's all calculated. You know what I mean? And I really do. It made me feel bad for the generation that's younger and doesn't like we kind of can watch this documentary and take away from like, oh, man, this shit is effed up, you know, but these kids, they, they don't care about the documentary. They're the ones that are feeding into this. You know, they're mm -hmm. the ones that are are want to say the target audience so oh, okay yeah and we're and we're the ones that are you know what what do you call it we're like the people that are feeding into it i guess mm -hmm. i don't know how to put it but yeah it really did freak me out and it made sense whenever i'm like hey i was just talking about um target and now target ads are all on my phone it's so weird you know all that kind of stuff it's and then they explain to you like well yeah they're listening you know and in it, every little click that you do, every little post that you do, and it's kind of like, it, it's really bad for your mental health, you know, and there's been times where I've been very consumed in it. So yeah, it's, it's, it's an eye opener for sure, but it's kind of like a, it is what it is as well. But now that you, I'm, I'm just more aware. <laughs> yeah. So turning off the notifications was kind of how you would, you responded to it. Um, so that, yeah, and, it, and it helps actually. I'm not going to lie to you. I, I'm not constantly like, you know, like yeah. this constantly, you know, and yeah. I, sometimes I go back and it's nice to see notifications rather than before I didn't, ha I would look at every single one and now it's like, oh, okay. You know, it's, yeah. it, it's a it's more refreshing to be a little disconnected. Yeah. What do you think the end game is? And I know it's a huge, like philosophical question just to drop on your desk there. But what's the, I mean, we saw, I don't know if you ever saw this movie with Tom Cruise. Steven Spielberg did this movie years ago called Minority Report. It's really good. Mm -hmm. You ever want a thought-provoking sci-fi kind of futuristic movie? Minority Report? I'll put that on my list. Yeah, Minority Report's really good. And it it came out probably, It's that movie's probably 15. Oh, and I think it came out early 2000s. And mm -hmm. so that film, it's amazing how many things they already predicted in that movie. Um, where they, you know, people walk into a building and there is advertisement, customized audio advertisement coming from a screen somewhere that's calling you specifically. And it oh. knows all these things about you, like on the spot and starts saying, oh, you're here looking for red sweaters, correct? On aisle seven, uh, we've got medium, uh, your size, uh, we have your size in this and this and that. Uh, size seven shoes we have them on this aisle so they already know all this stuff in the movie and had was it, it was real creepy so i mean what's the end game is it something like that will people will there be a backlash of this at some point and people might just say i'm done with social media um i don't know honestly like i mean i was looking at um, I don't know if I don't forgot what year, but maybe 2035 that LA wants to convert completely into uh, economically friendly vehicles. So that's one like, I don't know if that has to do with that at all. But I was just like, what? Like, you know, what if somebody can't, you know, afford that or whatever, or, um, or whatnot. And then on top of that, I've also read that people want to get rid of, um, you know, actual cashiers, or if you see the self checkout, or, you see, when we call on the phone, it's so hard to get an actual person. Like, I want to throw my phone outside the window. I feel like when we, our generation is gone, like all of us, I feel like it is going to end up like that because that's what these kids have grown up to see. So I feel like that is the end goal, but I don't know. I don't mm -hmm. know how the outcome is going to be, you know? Mm -hmm. And not all like advancements in technology are bad. I mean, how, no. would, how, how would any of us get by without GPS? Oh my gosh. I remember MapQuest days. Do you remember MapQuest? 
Oh yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. I would print out the paper, and if you miss one turn, that's it. Figure it out. Hopefully, you're good with directions. <laughs> yeah, I don't miss that at all. Um, yeah. Yeah, you can burn the maps, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> exactly. Trying to plot a map while you're driving in the, I would. I don't know if I would be alive right now if it wasn't for GPS. Honestly. I, because <laughs> I've gotten into some places I didn't know where I was at, and I could have gotten in a wreck trying to figure out what it was, but the GPS saved my life more, more than once. Um, sure. This is a good segue, because we're talking about social media. You're talking about notifications. Mm -hmm. um, I've got this. Actually, I've got a clip. I want to show this. You were on the Steve Harvey show. Oh, and... yes, I was. That's a horrible. Oh, my God. My skin looks so bad in that clip. Their cameras are like ultra HD. Like, they're just like. <laughs> I think the Steve Harvey was doing it on purpose because they, the, the host of a show, you guarantee they get all the best lighting. Oh, hundred percent. He does not look like that. Come on. <laughs> yeah. So they get, they get the host, the best lighting. They get, they got a makeup artist that comes in and fixes them up and does all that stuff for them. And then they put like the shitty lighting on the guest. So that way the, yeah. host, looks, the host looks like, artificially they make the host look that much more better looking than everyone else. I think it's done on purpose. You're right. Because I've got a conspiracy here, but I think I might be onto something. You might be onto something because you're right. Oh, we do get all the shitty lighting. <laughs> That's why live streams are the best because you're at your, your location. You control all your surroundings right here. You don't even see it. There's lighting right here. <laughs> we can't mess with you that way. Like Steve Harvey. Okay. Here it is. Here it goes. But there's this epidemic that's been going around. Guys have been sending me pictures of their, uh, you know, not asking for these pictures. I don't know if I just look like I want these pictures, but I don't. Wait, I would be, why would a guy send you that? What are you doing on your Instagram? E eating my food. Just, you know, I'm there. I'll be there. My ice cream. Maybe I'm. You eating ice cream on Instagram? <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, that's why you getting a pictures. Salad? <laughs> So there it is. All right. So I still never said ice cream. I set myself up there. <laughs> What's that? I said I set myself up. I shouldn't have said ice cream, oh. but I shouldn't be setting myself up if you know what I mean. <laughs> you it was uh well, yeah, you were kind of in the moment. You're on TV and national TV, worldwide TV, maybe. Uh Steve Harvey's there. I mean, sometimes things just get kind of blurted out. Um Instagram, that's what Instagram's for. People post food pictures on Instagram. Mm -hmm. in, fact, in, the, exactly. in the early days of Instagram, it was all about the food pictures more than anything else. Yeah, remember that? That's what we would post before. Yeah, and then it kind of got, sh there was food shame. People shame people for posting, for posting food. food. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. And I did it. We all did it. So anyway, yeah, so you, you were running. Oh, by the way. We had and we did an IG live. We do IG lives a couple of times a week where we just go on and I take questions from people. Went on did IGA live. Did an IGA IG live last week. Guy exposed himself. We put a guy on because I've put uh -huh. people on before. It's always fun. It usually turns out really good. And mm -hmm. I put my luck. Last week we put a guy on. He exposed himself on our live. What do you mean? Well, um, he was. He started off. I'm just talking to him because I, I had some really fun. People I'd put on and they they took us on a uh, shows their movie poster collection. We had another guy who was a paramedic and uh, from from North Carolina, a really interesting guy. We ended up putting him on IG Live. So I kind of liked the, the excitement of the, you know, but I was playing with fire. I kind of like the excitement of not knowing, just putting someone on that requested to come on our live. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Knowing what's behind door number two, you know, what's behind door number three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It always turned out pretty good. I mean, we had one shirtless dude that came on one time, and I gave him a hard oh, time. God. <laughs> he, I gave him a hard time. He was sitting on his porch, just sitting. He put he put his shirt on. He was cool after that. But last week, brought a guy on, talking to him. Started off normal, talking to him about movies, TV, whatever's going on in the world. And then the phone all of a sudden pans down, and he's pantsless, and he's pleasuring himself, yeah. pleasuring himself on ig live so i was, did he expose himself on purpose oh i'm sure he i'm sure he did it seemed very deliberate i mean i didn't get a chance to ask him <laughs> like uh -huh. i didn't continue to interview him because i was af i was afraid of us getting in trouble for being the you know 
the facilitator yeah, yeah. of showing that. So I, and we had, you know, we had good 20 people on a lot of people that are regulars that come on our lives. I recognize yeah. that we're on there and I felt guilt because I had put him through that kind of situation, you know, yeah, that situation is awkward and it's nothing. I, I, there's never, it's never been pleasure to me <laughs> no, so you being a woman now that for me i've not had a lot of that <laughs> that situation we had that happen last time there might have been a couple of weird things but you had you had a situation you asked steve harvey about it now tell me he seemed to have a reaction it was a little bit was he shaming you yeah so i felt really like some type of way and i usually am very outspoken but i wasn't really expecting him to shame me like that i feel like he was very sexist and it's kind of like that theory where it's like she was asking for it theory right like when someone gets raped or something they're like and i know that's very extreme but what was she wearing you know what i mean like oh she shouldn't be wearing that what time was she out you know so to me like i was very offended by that because it's like he was basically telling me that me being myself on on instagram or whatever is me asking for it so that kind of, you know, threw me off. I should have like went on a whole rant and ran with that whole scenario. <laughs> but I, I was just, I felt really, I felt some type of way about it. I just felt like he really, he embarrassed me in a sense, you know, he's saying, oh, that's why you're getting those explicit pictures. No, I know girls that don't post pretty much anything and they still get explicit pictures. I mean, some more than, you know, others, like, cause there are men that think that way that, oh, she's asking for it or this girl just because she's posting up in her bikini, I guess I'm just going to send her my penis. Um, I've actually, my penis pictures have a toned down because I started to uh, blast people. I would repost them. I would obviously blur out the the genital <laughs> genitalia area. That's, That's a solution there. I thought of that. Yeah. Before. Yeah. And then I would put their name and say, this person is disgusting and likes to send their penis. And then people would start cussing me out like, you stupid bitch why did you do that and I'm like well don't be sending me your genitals you know so then I started that's what I kind of started doing and a lot of people kind of stopped you know here and there you know there'll be a newbie that'll try to send me their disgusting stuff but it's calmed down since I've done that but I don't think that's fair like no, I, I was I used to be like I'll be hanging out with my mom and I open up my snapchat and it's like whoa like I just I just never understood the logic and I still don't understand the logic like has it worked um, what are you trying to get out of it? Do you want me to say I'm on my way? I don't know. <laughs> I, it, it's, I don't, I, it must be a sickness. I have no idea. No, but pre, yeah, I used to get a lot of them. Pre-internet, you know, pre-web, web days, they had flashers and they would flash, um, you know, they flashed women in public and there was always those old shows you'd watch and there would be like a guy at a convenience store with a trench coat. And so that's kind of like the modern day, like now version of that yeah. That's a good way to look at it. Sort of that mentality, I guess, has always been around. It's just now it's got a different way to, I don't know how, how you would expression. I don't know if you've expressed <laughs> but I mean, I mean, I get it now after have what I went through last week. I get it. I mean, I always saw the offense, offensiveness of it, obviously, but never did I see the offensiveness more so than last week and it's i mean it's different for a guy than it was, it was happening yeah. to a female but there were female people on my live so mm -hmm. they were they were exposed to that so in that situation but it's really a mental rape of sorts for me thank you that is the best term for it it really is it's like i didn't ask for this mm -hmm. you know and now i have this disgusting image in my head i did i did not ask you for this picture so yeah. um i know in some places they say that it is an offense now, but who goes through all that trouble to, you know, and sometimes people send it with fake profiles or whatnot, but I guess flashers is the best term for it, but I just never understood the, the logic behind it. Honestly, I, I really don't. If I, if I want to see it, I will personally come pay you a visit. Honestly, <laughs> I, you don't need to send it to me. <laughs> I, I don't know. Maybe it'll eventually get played out at some point. Like the, especially doing things like you're doing, like trying to, you know, call them out on, on social yeah. media. And then uh, memes and stuff, people making fun of people who do that. So I feel like they're calming down a little more now. Yeah. It's not, it's like when you get new toys, like we, we got the internet. It was a new, still a fairly new toy. It came out like in the nineties, late nineties is when it really started coming on the scene. 
still fairly new toy, just over 20 years old, and people don't know how to how to act. Mm, and I, I think the longer we're with this, we'll get kind of just used to it, and maybe the the craziness, the the insanity like that will will settle down. Um, but so. yeah, yeah. So anyway, you did rap. You did a rap video. It came out. You dropped a rap video, and and you working as a radio host in the hip hop scene. You put out a rap video. Is it my understanding you were kind of uh, you had to be kind of persuaded into it? It really wasn't something you were looking to do. Um, I, you know, I've always joke around and say that I want to do it. You know, I always kind of did that. But my friends had came out with a song. They're they're Indian. And you remember the song Satiana? I don't know if you remember that song. Yeah. Down, okay, so they made a version called Jotiana. And it was like, got them saying, bust down Jotiana, like the Indian version. And um, just nothing crazy, not as bad as like Satiana, but it was like a little song that they made. And um, I assumed that they would have asked me to be in the video, but they didn't <laughs> because they're my friends. So I'm like, you know, they're like, hey, we just made a song. This is the name of the song, this and that. I'm like, oh, shit, dope. And they're like, yeah, we're going to shoot the video next month. Well, and I'm like, okay, cool, you know, and then the video just comes out and I'm like, Oh, okay. Well that's weird. But, and then all the people, we have like mutual friends and everybody was commenting like, Oh, we thought, we thought Jody was going to be in the video, you know, this and that. And I'm just like, haha, you know, smirking. And then somebody was like, you know what, why don't you like drop a verse on there? And I'm like, drop a verse, you know, and they're like, yeah, that'd be kind of cool. You know? And I was listening to the song and then I kind of like, I, I can write, but I've never thought about rapping, you know? So I like came up with some lyrics and this and that, and I kind of just like tried it. And then I sent it over to my friend who made the song. I'm like, hey, I did this for fun, ha ha, you know? And he's like, dude, this is good. And I'm like, good. And he's like, yeah, you just got to fix a little bit of this and that. And then, you know, you we can, he's like, I'll mix and master it for you and whatever you want to do with it. And then I just thought it would be funny to do a complete rap video with just car, three expensive cars and, you know, just me rapping in front of it. I just thought it would be the most like rap thing to do. So I did it and um, I, I just released it randomly. Like it wasn't no big release or anything, but mm -hmm. well, like 60 something thousand views on YouTube. Not bad for not being under a label or something. <laughs> good. Yeah, that's really good. Got yeah, some streams going. <laughs> you had fun with it. So you, you would do some more of it. Will you do another? I had a lot of people ask me to do features on their songs, actually. So mm -hmm. I, I think I might. I did get a lot of backlash because in our Indian culture, like women don't really rap, you know, and it was kind of fun. I already do things outside the norm on my like show and talk about things. So mm -hmm. it was kind of fun to do something of that sort. It was kind of like there's not anyone really doing that. Yeah. So I think in that sense, it kind of gave me more ammo to want to do more. So. I might, yeah, I might do some more features, which sounds so funny for me to say, but it's just so funny to see on like Spotify and this and that, it says, Jody K, artist, and I'm like, what is going on? <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I watched it, I watched it, and by the time I got the third time, I was like, this is actually really good, like, this is really good. <laughs> and I'm not Thank you. That. And actually, my favorite part was your, your rap in it, the, you know, that I thought was really good. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. My my friend actually were like, who taught you how to be on beat like that? I'm like, I was on beat. I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, it's really yeah. Good. Check it out, everyone. If you get a chance, uh, check. It's on YouTube. You can just Google uh, or, or YouTube Jody K and the video comes up on the first page. You'll see yep. it. You'll see the cars. You'll figure out. It looks like a, it's a, a screenshot of a rap video. You'll know which one it's is the rap video. Literally, it was just like my alter ego and trying to be a rap star. You know, it was like, it was, it was, I had a good time shooting. It was fun. I had a good time. Shout out to everyone who was a part of it. That's yeah, really good. We have some uh, comments. We'll, we'll, we'll throw a couple of those up before we get off. Um, there was a gentleman that has become the hero of the internet. He went viral. I was mentioning this to you. There was a guy that came up and he went viral with his video. Uh, this guy on a skateboard drinking cranberry juice Oh, Let's is that why all the cranberry juice is missing from the store? <laughs> yes. yes. So this guy does this video and he is on a skateboard on TikTok, mm -hmm. skateboarding, drinking cranberry juice, lip syncing to Fleetwood Mac. And it's now he's like taking over the world. He's all over the place. Um, he's just having a good time. You know, this guy is just on. A, I mean, it's what people needed right now is to see someone just kind of 
you know, chillaxing on his skateboard. Yeah, having you know, a good time, living life. Is the cranberry juice sold out though, for real? In some spots, I've seen people Snapchatting and like messaging and saying the power of TikTok and there's like cranberry juice oh. missing. Oh, okay, so that's yeah. So Ocean Spray is like loving this. This is the best advertisement they could have ever asked for. Oh, of course, yes. Not the first person on TikTok to have done something like this that has gone viral. Now, you, you coming from Vine, you were a viral star on Vine. And then, of course, that is what got you into wanting to do more in media. What do you think about TikTok? And do you think that there's a, a, there's a chance of TikTok falling in the, on the sword, kind of like Vine did, and sort of uh, because of the change of ownership? There, I heard Walmart's buying them. Uh, oh, wow. It's never been a good thing when a social media platform is, is, is purchased and taken over by another entity. Uh, you go back as far as MySpace, when MySpace mm. sold, uh, I believe they sold to News Corp originally. And then that was the beginning of the end for MySpace. They never recovered. Yep. Facebook is kind of not what it used to be, but it's still there. Mm -hmm. But they never changed ownership. They, it's been Zuckerberg all along. So yeah. TikTok now, I mean, if Walmart takes them over, does that take out some kind of the cool coolness of TikTok? I, I don't know if it's just I'm getting older or not. I tried the TikTok thing and, you know, Vine was my thing. And in Vine, there was no, there was like five filters, you know, didn't change your face. It just kind of changed the lighting. Mm -hmm. There wasn't a lot of crazy sound effects. There wasn't, you know, all that kind of stuff. It was like you had six seconds, you made something funny, boom, done, you know? You don't have, I like no one, I wasn't doing my makeup every day to make these videos. I just did, however, and I feel like nowadays with TikTok, it's, it's the fun is kind of being taken out of it. Um, I feel like, you know, there's so many, I feel like kids are getting so, even not even just kids, even older, older people, like they're, they're obsessing over it. And I feel like it's not as original as it used to be. And everybody's just trying to get viral now about getting viral. So people are just doing dumb things to get viral. And then there's advertising now and this and that. So I feel like the fun of TikTok, for me at least, is, is gone. I don't really enjoy making them. It's now for me, it's just I'll throw a song or something on there, like my music video or something mm -hmm. for advertising purposes. But the fun is kind of gone for me. And I, I feel like TikTok is gonna end, you know, soon, but not soon enough <laughs> because of the pandemic. People have a lot of time on their hands. Yeah. People are constantly going like this. Yeah. People aren't working. Uh, kids aren't in school. They're just Zooming. So there's a lot of time. So for right now, TikTok is going to be around. But I think once everything goes back to normal, hopefully, you know, I think it will be gone. Yeah. yeah. Is it getting back to normal? Please tell me this. I don't know. I remember people are getting less paranoid is from what I'm seeing from my experiences with people. Like people are kind of just like, fuck it now. <laughs> Um, and I think seeing other states open up and this and that, I think people are getting more calm about it, but you know, it's going to take some time. The new yeah. normal is such a scary word. Like everyone keeps calling it the new normal. I'm like, I don't I want that. to hear that no. term. <laughs> yeah. No. We've lived through it all. We've seen, you know, unfortunately 9-11, you know, mm. this, and then, you know, all that Kobe. It's just crazy, crazy, crazy times we've lived in. Like we're going to be in history books. <laughs> yeah, we've, we've, we've made it for sure uh, yeah so talking about the pandemic if you had if there had not been a pandemic imagine there's a multiverse and there's mm. jody k in another universe a different jody k but it's you but in a different universe getting kind of nerdy here so uh -huh. in the multiverse where there's no pandemic what's jody k doing in that that universe the non-pandemic version of this universe did you have plans in February that changed a lot? I wanted to travel a lot, actually, this year. I wanted to go to my home. Uh, so um, my background is India, like from India. I wanted to go to India and actually shoot a documentary of like me, you know, uh, going back to my route, to my village, to see this and that. And, you know, kind of go on like this little like finding myself, you know, India tour thing. And yeah, that got shut down really quick. <laughs> Um, and I was like convinced, I'm like, this is going to do so good. And then after that, I'm going to maybe start doing this traveling thing. And it kind of, you know, everything just stopped. And I first thought it was a party, you know, in the beginning here, I was eating and drinking all the time. And, <laughs> you know, I thought it was going to be over soon. But 
anyways, back in, back if there was no pandemic, I think I would have still been um, rethinking, thinking too much. You know how you said that you just kind of went ahead and did this, did the live broadcast and did it. Um, I wanted to, um, so our studio is closed at Dash, so we have to do everything via Zoom and online. Mm -hmm. My whole plan was to start shooting at the studio, having celebrities come over and always doing like uh, with a camera, videotaping all of it. Mm -hmm. And then with the pandemic, I was kind of like, what the hell am I going to do now, you know? So I think the pandemic really made me try not to be such a perfectionist about everything. So. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it, who cares if the video quality is bad? Just put it up there, you know? Who cares if, you know, this and that? And I feel like if I was back in the, you know, in the non-pandemic universe, maybe I would have still been working on it. You know, maybe I would have still been doubting myself or I would have been doing great. I don't know, because, uh, yeah. So I think I was going to do the whole, like, broadcasting while I was at the studio thing. And now I'm kind of doing a little bit of everything. Like, you can put yeah. me on this Zoom, that Zoom. It's all good. <laughs> We've been hovered into so many Zooms the last several months. <laughs> Zooms, ring lights. Like mm -hmm. I pretty much I wake I I dream like multiple ring lights. <laughs> <laughs> like there's a row of them. And they're all dancing yeah. and doing songs and whatever. Uh, weird stuff. Uh so talking about you were talking about your background and where you uh, where you came mm -hmm. from. Um there's several articles. I could go back uh in my research back to 2013 online about the popularity of Bollywood films and mm. the anticipation of them becoming uh, more internationally recognized and basically Bollywood to Hollywood, more of Bollywood to Hollywood. Um, and some of that's happened. There's been ripples of it over the years, but you'll have like a big movie that'll come out. It'll get some attention, get some Oscar buzz, maybe uh, does really well. And then you think, oh, this is the this is the start of it. We're going to see some, you know, wave of this, and then nothing for a while. I mean, am I right or right on that? Am I right or am I wrong? And do you think that it's just a matter of maybe very short time we'll finally see that Bollywood really truly stepping in to Hollywood and making its mark? Um, I feel like what's happening now with Bollywood is that the actors are kind of merging into Hollywood instead. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like you'll see like. Um, a big actor in an Indian, I mean, sorry, in a American movie here and there, you know what I mean? Or you'll, you know, you'll see kind of like pop-ups or you'll see Hollywood into, um, you know, Bollywood. Like you'll see kind of like the actors kind of merging. As for the movies, I kind of feel like, I know, like I, I feel, okay, so there was a story, there's a really big actor in India. He tried out for a role for Batman and they, they told him that he can't, do the role because of his accent and i feel like america as a whole is kind of still you know not fond of accents so i feel like that's kind of indian Like a black person in the movie here and there. Now they're sprinkling the Indian person in the movie here and there. <laughs> uh, you know, unfortunately, it froze up. I got to where you were uh, talking about accents, at least on my end. Oh, okay. You're talking about the accents and how Americans don't seem to. Uh, I don't know if I'm changing your words around, but Americans don't seem to respond to to accents still very well. Uh, then you're, yeah, I I, you kind of froze up. Yeah, I kind of feel like that's what it is. I was giving an example of an actor. Um, an, an Indian actor, he tried out for the role of Batman when they were looking for the new Batman and he was turned down because of his accent. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I, and I've noticed that a lot in today's world as well. Um, I feel like the reason reasoning being, I feel like a lot of people aren't fond of it and, and that's just, you know, it is what it is. And instead I feel like Hollywood is putting the Indian people in the movies. Like, you know, we're in fashion right now. Like there's an Indian show on Netflix because of Mindy. Like they're sprinkling Indian people in their, um, you know, in their, in Hollywood now. So there's no need yeah. for, you know what I'm saying? We're like the, like, remember when they'd always be like at least one African-American person or somebody in the movie? Now it's us. There's going to be one black person, one Indian person in the movie. So that kind of does their job. So 
I, I don't think so, honestly. I don't think so. I think the actors might, you know, do a flip flop, but I don't know. I don't think it's gonna. But they do definitely do take our style and stuff here and there. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, and and there's a uh, you know finally you know Gal Gadot playing Wonder Woman, um, mm. has a hint of an accent you that is is there in the role. I mean for me, I mean I think it adds a nice layer to her character. You know she's supposed to be a god. So she's, from, she's from an mm -hmm. island. I mean if she had just sort of a weird like Midwestern accent, I don't think it would actually. Yeah. Work for her. <laughs> I think it would be a little weird. Um, so yeah, that the actors, more actors seem to be coming in and kind of rather than mm -hmm. movies themselves, but the actors are kind of making their merging their way in. Um yeah. it'd be really cool if if some investors could get together and say, We're gonna open up shop in Hollywood, like a full blown Bollywood studio in Hollywood. I don't think anyone's done that. That would be really cool. Um, I think that would be wonderful. I mean, like you saw the movie Slumdog Millionaire, how well that movie did. It mm -hmm. did really good. Yeah. And then, <laughs> after, yeah, and after that, it was just kind of like the actors just kind of merged into the scene, you know what I mean? Rather than the whole scene coming in and stuff. But I think that would be a great idea. I mean, we have a lot of great actors. We have a lot of great cin cinematography, if you look at it and stuff. Mm -hmm. Great musicals. Oh, yeah. So it would be great for it to happen. And great actors, like the actors that we have are very, you know, well-versed. But I have actually noticed, so, so Priyanka Chopra, she had a, you know who she is, right? Yeah. When with Nick Jonas, yeah. So she used to be a Bollywood actress. And then um, she had a show called Quantico on, yeah. ABC. on Netflix. ABC. Yeah, that's and for me, yeah, and for me, her acting was so Bollywood that it was cringy to me because I feel like mm -hmm. Bollywood is so much drama and very dramatic, and I feel like she was still doing that acting in there. So I feel like, you know, they're going to have to kind of change that up a little bit when they're trying to merge in. You know, it's funny. Yeah. Uh, when I, you know, I've been in, act in the acting world, too, um, and they used to, when you, stage actors used to go train in film acting because they were, you know, as you know, I'm sure you know this very well coming from being from New York and then now in L.A., uh, the difference between stage acting and film acting. But a lot of stage actors would have to go retrain to bring up kind of they were so big and everything mm -hmm. you did, which you're required to do with stage acting. And then you come into the film world where it's more like what's happening here and it's more real and it's not. Yeah, yeah. Trauma. So that'd be yeah. interesting if there was a training ground for Bollywood actors to go and training and getting used to hollywood style of acting that would be nice like you said open up a little thing because they i mean they have talent it's just a little different mm -hmm. different style yeah i think if two or three people got together that had the capital and opened up shop i mean it wouldn't even have to be in hollywood it could be in atlanta i mean tyler perry's doing big things in, in atlanta now there's yeah, okay. tons, of, tons of stuff in it uh, over there because of the cost a filming, I think, is less expensive to shoot in Georgia, so they could even open it up in Georgia. Uh, or there you go. if you're listening, guys, let's do it. <laughs> yeah, we just need like a couple of two or three people put their money in. We can get this going. Uh, call Jody; she's available for acting. Yeah, uh, that's well. my end goal. I want to be on a Netflix series one day. That's going to be going forever. <laughs> I believe we're going to see it. I really do. I believe we're going to see it. Uh, I'm Thank really, you. Excited. I'm really excited about that. Uh, so yeah, so that would be that would be really cool. Um, this is wonderful. Uh, thank you so much for coming in and doing this. We're kind of in the we're kind of starting all over again. We're kind of in the infancy of this uh, live stream. It went pretty well. It was a little. There's a little. Uh, we're still working out kind of the a few glitches here and there, but uh, for the most part, it's pretty good. And you yeah. were the, and you're the reason why it turned out so well. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much. I love this. This is great. This is, it makes you, you know, even though we're not able to go to each other's studios, it gives you that feel still. Yeah. Yeah. We're learning. We're forced to learn new things and kind of train a new, new avenue, mm -hmm. just like you did going into rap. And by the way, here's <laughs> a, little, a little footage from a rap video, all the essentials, yeah. like you said, I had to have some cars. Yep. The belt, the purses. I had to keep it. I had to do a rap video. <laughs> all the, by the way, when I was watching your rap video, there's one more thought. When I was watching a rap video, I start thinking about rap ideas, like things for rap music. Okay. And by the way, I've got an unreleased rap song myself. Oh my gosh, release it. Now it's comedy pair, it's, it needs a little bit of work, but it, it was like it was like my so Guns N' Roses had an album that they took like 12 years to finish. The Chinese mm -hmm. Democracy, I think is the name uh -huh. of that. And that so this has been like my Chinese democracy. 
this <laughs> this rap song I work I've been I've had it in the vault for for years. Okay, so I had this crazy idea. You know these rap mixing genres and music. They've done it over the year. First, obviously, the OG was rock and rap mixed together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Going way back. Then you had uh, he heavy metal, metal and rap. That was a mm -hmm. thing. Country and rap too. Country and rap was next. Then they they brought country country and rap together, which I'm all for. I mean, some of the music's very, as you know, kind of cheesy. Yeah. I mean, over and music. over again. <laughs> yeah, but I do love how it kind of brings like two like groups of people together, sort of in a weird way that maybe no, wouldn't necessarily be together all the time. That, yeah, that I think cool. it. And That's I also think that people get, you know, get curious, like, oh, let me tap into country or let me tap in. Like, I think it gives people more of a broader, you know, taste as well, for the most part, sometimes. Yeah, they dip in a little bit because this artist will collaborate with this artist and we're like, well, I kind of want to see what else they did. So they go mm -hmm. start that down that wormhole and see what else they did. Okay. Has anyone ever, I don't know if anyone's ever done a, I know they haven't done a good version of it, but polka, hip hop blended together. I mean. I know it's oh, weird. Yeah, it's a little different. <laughs> it's kind of weird, but it's so weird and, and that it might be right. I don't know. I, uh, it might be. Why don't you try it out? I'm going to, I'll kick it around. I'll see yeah. what I can come up with. I'll, I'll put yeah, some yeah. beats together. We already know, no, like no publicity is bad publicity. So even if, you know, it doesn't work out, maybe someone will just be like, what the hell is this? And it'll, you know, go viral. It's kind of weird. <laughs> okay, polka <laughs> rap. <laughs> polka rap is coming. Poker rap, you guys. You heard it here first. And we're going to auto tune Steve Harvey auto <laughs> and put him in the song. It was always called when they take someone's voice and they, they auto tune it, it again. And they put it in this. Okay. We're going to take uh, Steve Harvey and we're we going to, he's going to be in the video as well. Perfect. And he's going to be the only one looking good. We're all going to look like shit. Yes. <laughs> the conspiracy is. Is that the host put terrible lighting on their on their audience members, and then they put this amazing lighting on themselves, and then they get all the makeup and the filters and whatever else, and then they purposely put shitty lighting on the the audience, hundred percent to make themselves look. I mean, they've done it for years with the couch where they they the chair the host sits on is always propped up. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, the chair so they look taller and bigger over the over the guest, kind of talk down to them from their big chair. So. That I makes sense, actually. That, does, that makes me feel better because I was like, oh my gosh, like what is going on? Like they could have at least gave me some softer lighting. Gosh. Yeah. <laughs> Not only did he shame you about ice cream and, and the and the pictures that you were being sent, but he also gave you shitty lighting on purpose. Shitty lighting. Yeah. Steve Harvey is not is on my shit list. <laughs> Steve Harvey, yeah. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. Well, hey, Jody K, thank you so much. Thank and you. Then, thank you for having me. We had a couple of people that came in and, and uh, just wanted to uh, Uncle Paul hashtag. Uh, that's <laughs> my brother, by the way. Uh, also, drinking cranberry juice on a skateboard. Hashtag life goals. For hashtag life goals. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, and then we had we had uh, no video. But then we were back. We were back. Yeah, we got it all, though. We got it all. All right. Well, Jody K, thank you so much. Everybody out thank there, you. thank you. Thank you so much. And you take care. You, you guys. Fingers crossed for that we have the best, like the last quarter of the year. Mm -hmm. the, main quarter of the, la the last quarter of the year is going to be amazing. Everybody out there, have a good day. Our second millisecond. Goodbye. Thunder Pop is a Hit the Bricks production. Hit the bricks! Hit the bricks! I'm going to come back here in a few moments and do 
an after show where we'll just take questions or anybody wants to come on and chat. Also trying to figure out why it was freezing up a little bit with the video, but we'll work that out. This is still new. The live stream is very new. So we'll, we'll, we'll work these things out, but I'm very excited about how good it's going considering we've only done a few of these. All right. I'll be back for a, a little after show after the, the party, after the after party. <laughs>